locked in. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubble. Welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling, the show about pro wrestling and everything else. Not enough everything else, if you ask me. Whatever. I am the man of the hour, the man with the power. Too sweet to be sour, the Duke. And I'm here with the Boston bad mm. boy who decided to clean himself up today. You know, I, I always look good, and you would do a service to the entire world if you could be like one-tenth as cleaned up as I am on a regular basis. Oh, I'm, this is this is softball here tonight. Softball. Yeah, you know this is not even my A game. You look like a fool. Yeah, you're as wearing I, a scarf. Yeah, tucked into a sweater vest. Yes, I got to keep the neck warm. No word of that is a lie. You know what's funny? I hung out with a good friend of mine the other night. I had drinks with Tony Maserati. Okay, who is a sports newscaster yep. here in Boston. Very yep. well Legend. renowned guy. He's been on ESPN the whole night. Been on yards. ESPN. Yeah. He's nuts. Yeah, he's a nice guy. I like Tony a lot. Yeah. And the gimmick when they're on television is he always wears a sweater vest, right? That's right. So he bagged out of his show a little early. I don't know how that he, he managed that, by the way. So if, if his manager is listening. Here, exactly. Yeah. He's at the bar. I walk in wearing the sweater vest. Why didn't he change out of the sweater vest? This is a thing. You guys with the sweater vest? We're legends. Well, there's a, there's a weird thing. It's like a cult. Yeah. We're it's legends. like a cult. We don't have a it's lot like of a hair. It's like a sweater vest cult. We wear the sweater vest. Hey, we're raving lunatics. We don't lunatic. have a lot of hair. Yeah, yeah, it's that's true. what happens. Yeah. You know, speaking of raving lunatics, how about that R. Kelly? No, speaking of cults. Yeah. You know, what is going on with him? That interview with Gail King, what was that on? Was it CBS? I think CBS did Well, yeah, I mean, have we seen, we've seen? we only seen clips so far, right? They, no, it, well, they, they showed portions of it. I right. think there's is more Is it 60 Minutes, right, is yeah. doing the full thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. But here's the thing that kills me, though. Mm. He's yelling and screaming like a lunatic. Leaping up. And, and and people are, are talking about how composed Gail King was. Right, because she's so composed. Well, that's the thing. We're obsessed in this culture about women's composure, right? Yes. Back in the day, if a woman had a bad day, well, she's got a case of the nerves and yep. put her in a mental institution. Yep. And God forbid it's a black woman. Well, they always have an attitude and all this other stuff. Right, right, right. right. So the angry black woman. So she was composed while this guy is being a raven lunatic. That's not. That's not well, a compliment. part of all right. So <laughs> there's a lot of questions here. Uh, yeah. Part of this is, um, well, you think he was trying to goad her into a reaction? Absolutely. To say, like, look at look at this. Here's a crazy black woman. She's after me. Yep. Just like these crazy black women who are mothers of the women that I'm raping Bingo. And, and keeping in, uh, in 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 bondage Bingo. here. Bingo. And it didn't work. No. Didn't work. Opposite. Didn't work. Yeah. Now here's the thing. Gail King. She's buddies with Oprah. Sure. The best. Sure. The best interviewer in the business. Sure. You, you ain't gonna shake her. Nope. There was like prep sessions. You know how they do prep for like the presidential debate? Those two were gabbing on the phone for days leading up to this interview. And you know Oprah said, take that motherfucker out if he comes at, if he comes at you. Pay Gail King her money. That, Pay, exactly. her. Pay, Pay her. Pay her. Pay her. She she deserves like George Stephanopoulos money. Pay her. Well, here's so he leaps up in the middle of a, an interview. Yep. And he's saying random if the camera's on. Yeah, R. Kelly. It's a, it's a, it's an, it's a television. I want you to interview. get all of this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're yeah. getting all of yeah, it. We're getting all of it. And she's right. just sitting there going, "Yeah, we're getting all of it yep. to herself." You know, she just like, she's just like, I smell the Edward R. Murrow oh, war here. Yeah. And there's this picture of him, leap leaped up like and, Othello. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. And with tears in his eyes. Yeah. What a sad story. Yeah. And she's standing there like she looks like Abraham Lincoln sitting in that chair. And it's like it looks like a, a Renaissance painting. Absolutely. And everybody's commenting on wow, such composure and such how this composure. does this does this not uh, define 2019 and 2018? And I said, you know what? It kind of does, but that's not a good thing. No. Because again, why are we obsessed with her composure? Yeah. And not this guy is a lunatic. Should be wheeled out in a straitjacket. Well, he's in jail now. He should have been they in jail. Put him in jail. Yeah. They did. Yeah. So he's actually in jail. Yep. But they got him on child support. Evasion. Whatever they got, they got Al Capone on on tax evasion. Exactly, exactly. Get this guy off the street. Yep. And yep. these women who are, again, I don't know if brainwashing in the way we see it in the movies exists, but that's got to be pretty close. <laughs> systemic abuse. Yeah. Leads to this. Yep. yep. You break someone down. Yeah. You break someone down. Separate them from their family. They'll give up. They'll give up. Yeah. And now they're going to defend him. Mm. Leads into another, uh, so it's just it's insane. And by the way, you 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 clued me into something. Uh, we're talking about uh, his insane hair dye. Oh yes, which I didn't spray on. It's the spray on here, but there's yeah. a certain name for it. Biggin. Biggin. Which you said to me, and I didn't get it. And I yeah. actually googled. It, and I'm like, oh, because I'm not African American, and I guess in barbershops, this is the thing. If you got a sure, it's a it's a very 
distinctly dark hair dye for distinctly dark hair. Unusually dark. <laughs> and, and it looks like the Ron Popeil spray-on hair. Absolutely. And he was totally... He had it. He had it the was big all. It was like a helmet. Yeah, it was amazing. And that man's in his fifties. Yeah, at least. And he yeah. looks it. He doesn't look. He for a guy with that kind of money. I know. He has not aged well. No, no. Look at people who have a lot of money. They always look young. They look young. Yeah. They can afford to look young. George Clooney. Yeah. Uh, if we're talking about black, but you're Denzel Washington. Denzel the guy's Washington. aging into. He looks like a fine wine. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's our Kelly? Our Kelly's got money, more money than both of them. What's he, he doing? He's using that spray on stuff. That's you know why? Doing. Because he thinks he's a pimp. Well, and he a, lives his life as a pimp. He's the worst pimp ever. But he's the worst pimp ever. Yeah. Like, pimp is a low-income job. Yeah. You can't pull that off in a high income. No. You know what I mean? No. Like, if you want that, R. Kelly, you got to take... He wants both. Because he's, he's nuts. He's mixed up. Like, here's the thing. Kanye is nuts. Hmm. I feel bad for Kanye. Hmm. I don't feel bad. No. Because Kanye's only, like, messing with his own life. Exactly. For the most part. Exactly. Man, maybe R. Kelly's his family. ruined... Multiple lives. He's ruining other people's lives. Yeah, and, and what does families. he do? He does the well. They're all out to get me. Yeah, they're lying on me. He I'm says, "Fighting for my life." Fight. Yeah, you are because you're going to end up because you know what's going to happen in prison. And he's only he's only crying to Gail King again, a manipulation in front of a woman. Yep. Because you know he pulls this shit, and women go, "Oh man, he's such a uh, look at the romantic time. song." She was like, "Look at looking at her notepad." Robert. Going, <laughs> Robert, Robert? She, right? <laughs> you know, she was like, yeah. he got called in front of the principal yep. for the first time in his yep. life. Robert, and she was not having it. I thought she was going to body slim, and, which would have been appropriate. And and the systemic abuse thing mm. ties right into. I watch. I haven't watched the whole thing. The fir- I've watched the first part of the Michael Jackson. Thing. I haven't watched it yet. I'm not going to say anything about it. Yep. Other than it's incredibly disturbing, mm. and other than whatever it is. Mm. But I will say, when you look at the nuts and bolts of it. Change Michael Jackson to Joe Schmo. Mm. It is what it is. Yep. It happened. Yep. There's no way it didn't happen. Yeah. There's no it's, way. It's pretty hard. Nothing makes... Be, you know why? Because none of it makes sense. Yeah. Which none is of why, it. Which is why it makes sense. Exactly right. Yep. Like the whole... That whole persona... Nothing about it. Mm. Same with R. Kelly. It's larger than life insanity. Like who would accuse him of running a sex cult? R. Kelly. I know. Why? Why? What? Well, one of the, literally one of the greatest musicians of, of all time. Right. Right? Right. Singer, songwriter, the exactly. whole nine yards. Right. Right. Grammy Awards. How much of- money are they gonna you know what I mean? Like this yeah. isn't a money, this is a criminal case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's going away. I think they got him. He's going oh, away. He better go away. Yeah. Speaking of going away, uh sad news to report. King Kong Bundy. Yes. He's gone away. Yeah. He's gone up to the big ring in the sky. Yeah, I mean, it, it's that generation. Yeah, it's that generation. Sadly, you know, it's it's getting to be that he that was time. In the main event WrestleMania two versus Hulk Hogan. Wow, in a steel cage, really? And he was young. Yeah, I don't even think he was thirty. Really, main event. So he's younger than Hogan. I don't know if he's younger than. But they're Hogan. about the same age. They're about the same age. But really? Because I always think in my mind he's older somehow. But maybe he he didn't make the transition into the glam yeah. the glam and the modern quite as as the the other guys a did fairly young guy uh, so it just you know somebody said to my mom oh well that guy was on steroids that's why he passed away king kong bundy that's pre if he right? was on steroids then he was doing it all wrong cuz that dude was just a massive man and yeah. i'm not talking about muscle either that, that's like saying uh you know andre was on steroids yeah, I mean, there's no need for it just an ignorant comment but anyway, uh, shout out to big uh, King Kong Bundy's family and, and what have you. You know, married with children. Yeah, Al the, Bundy. The two families are are the Bundys, and who are their neighbors? I don't know. The Rhodes. The Rhodes really? Are, is there a, that's, is It there was a, because the writers of, of Married with Children were huge wrestling fans. Is this mine, by the that's way? That's yours. Thank you. I would never let you touch mine. Uh, I'm going to pretend it's a, 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 an alcoholic beverage. Well, it's a sparkling water. <laughs> exactly, because you don't let me have any fun. But they were wrestling fans. And later on, they had King Kong Bundy on on the show a couple times. That's funny. It was awesome, yeah. So it's just, you know, a little pop culture for you there. But uh, shout out to the family of uh, King Kong Bundy. And, and In fact, we got some other news uh, not for, not long before the, uh, we started recording tonight. In fact, I see the line blinking right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have Roy Lucia, you know, the, the historian there. Let, let's get Roy on the line here. Hey, how's it going, man? Not bad. Listen, man, you know, it's it's always a pleasure to hear your voice, uh, Roy, but under the circumstances uh, tonight, uh, this is a a tough um, 
call, but I, I know uh, that you, you have some information for us here. So if you don't mind, yeah. can you announce to the fans um, some terrible news that we received today in the wrestling community? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, today at noon Eastern Standard Time, uh, the destroyer Dick Byer passed away. He was 88 years old. Uh, it can't even be uh, understated how important he was not just to the wrestling community, but in so many ways to culture. You know, he um, he was uh, on a TV show that went for years in Japan. His match with Ricky Dozan back in the 60s in Japan, his first one, I believe it was, is still to this date the highest rated TV show uh, in the history of Japan. Like, like something like 82 share or some, something around those lines. You know, I think the MASH finale... Uh, in America was like a 56 share. So, I mean, it was not, not only that, but you had the whole nation of Japan, like huddling around TVs that were in windows at, at, at grocery stores or um, stores like that and, and huddling around to watch it. It was like, uh, you know, something that probably in our lifetime will we'll never, you know, with everyone having phones and all that, something we'll probably never experience ever again. Um, he left behind uh, three children, uh, Rich, Kurt, and Mona Chris, and his uh, wife Wilma. Uh, they uh, he he was a coach at University of Syracuse, uh, I believe, for both football and wrestling over the years. And uh, he was a former AWA World Champion under the name of uh, of a Doctor X instead of the Destroyer. I think it had something to do with like Ganya not. You know, thinking that everyone would know that he was uh, uh, Dick Byers, so he didn't want to call him the Destroyer, so they did the Dr. X gimmick instead. But he uh, basically was one of the founding members of Cauliflower Alley, you know, the oldest living member, uh, probably the oldest living wrestler that currently was around. And what he did for the club every year, you know, raising money for sick wrestlers and you know ones that were down on their luck and starting that tradition and all that like i said they i really could fill up a whole show and then some about everything that he has done in life you know his wrestling credentials are, are one thing but he you know i i I can't even think of a comparison but there you know he was more than just a pro wrestler he was an icon and, and someone that will deeply, deeply be missed. Absolutely. Roy, you had a, a powerful post uh, on your Twitter account. T tell us, tell everybody what your Twitter account is. Cause I want, I'm going to be linking it as well, but I want everybody to, to go check that out uh, immediately to see the post that you did. And you put up a picture of yeah, the destroyer. Yeah, as well. um, my first cauliflower alley was 2017, which Chadley was its last cauliflower alley. Um, he was probably the person I was looking forward to seeing the most there, and he, he couldn't have been greater. Uh, basically, his son Kurt posted this morning about the passing of his father, and his son had been messaging me back and forth for a while that, um, you know, things weren't looking good. Apparently, uh, a couple weeks back, there was a All Japan show where they wanted to bring him over, and the doctors just said, he can't do it, he's too frail. Wow. So, um, how, how can the, folks see the post on your, on your uh, Twitter there, uh, Roy? Oh, it, it, I'm pretty sure it's the, the, the last post that I did. My Twitter handle is at Roy Lucier, so R-O-Y-L-U-C-I-E-R. -E uh, other than the pin post, I'm pretty sure it's, it's the most recent post on there. Um, I don't think I've posted anything since, but wow. Wow. What, what, yeah. Hold on a second there, Roy, because uh, I, I just want to qualify something here. You know, Roy Lucier is our, our, our friend who is a, an amazing wrestling historian. You know, he, he's the guy that posts all these fantastic matches from the past and, and you know, wrestlers and, and fans from all over the world. They, they really appreciate Roy's um, information on the golden years of pro wrestling and, and beyond and all these – interesting facts but Roy is somebody who actually knew the destroyer and got a chance to spend some time with him at the cauliflower alley club uh events and what have you so it really is just a, a 
tremendous uh, situation here on the heels of King Kong Bundy passing away. Now we have the Destroyer. It just it's it's really heartbreaking. Uh, Roy, what's your what's your website, real quick, so fans can see some of these old matches and and, and what have you as well? Absolutely, uh, Roy's Wrestling Vault dot com is so uh, www dot Roy's R O Y S Wrestling Vault V A U L T dot com. Uh, on there is stories from the business, uh, all the DVDs that I have. I want to make it clear, none of them are for sale. I'm just trying to get up for historical purposes because I'm trying to, you know, to do, do something historical with this business and link everything together, whether it be Mexico, Japan, you know, the most random independent companies, as, as you've seen over the last week in, uh, in America, and, and find the most random stuff out there and share it, you know, kind of put all the puzzle pieces together on, you know, when who might have worked with who or met sure, who. and sure. And all that stuff, you know. Sure, like, sure. No, it's 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 a website that wrestlers far and wide, not just fans, but wrestlers far and wide, check out. And I know that you you have some really historical footage, and you know it's we're, we're going to have you come back, Roy, and, and give us an update on what's going on with the site and even some more information about the destroyer. I, I just I wanted to talk about it uh, briefly today and, and just let folks know from somebody who actually understands his career and and spent some time with him personally. Uh, to leave that message, yeah. but but let's let this marinate yeah. for uh, a week or so, and then we'll have you come back and provide some. Let even me. More I want info. to share. A, I want to share a quick story about uh, the destroyer. My second night at Cauliflower Alley, my wife and I are. You know, it's late at night, like eleven. We're, we're leaving, uh, going from. We got something to eat. Walking up, and Dick Byer was sitting there with no mask, and he saw me, and he comes. He he says to me, "Hey kid, hey kid, come here." And I, I walked up to him and he's all, hey, let me like sit down. Let me tell you about the time that I fought Mil Mascaris and I made him wrestle me. <laughs> now, basically, if anyone knows Mil Mascaris, the deal is, you know, the guy was hard to work with. And, you know, he, he basically wouldn't give you anything in the ring. So I sat there for an hour and a half. And, you know, my wife says, you two have fun. And uh, I sat there and listened to Dick tell me for an hour and a half about, you know, Mil Mascaris and, Baba and all the Jumbo Shrine and all these guys in all Japan and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it definitely, I, I, I can't say enough great things about Dick. And my heart just goes out right now to his son, Kurt, who I had on my short lived podcast a year and a half ago. We actually had a three hour episode where I, I just let him go on about his career. And uh, that's probably one of the best things that I think I've ever done. In, in this business was have a chance to sit down with Kurt and, you know, talk to him about his dad and his career and all that stuff. But my heart right now just goes out to his family. You know, he, he was a great man who lived a wonderful life. And, you know, men, they don't make men like him anymore. And, you know, I, I, he's, he's going to be missed by everyone that knew him. Wow. Roy knows a lot, man. Boy, Roy is uh, yeah. a dedicated fan. He is. And, and well-respected. The wrestlers yeah. love him. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. You and I were talking, and I think uh, he's going to be calling into the show momentarily, but uh, a fella mm. wrestles on the indie scene. Uh, had some things with some folks who aren't good good wrestling fans. Oh, that's a good point, actually. And it's yeah. and it's and it's starting to roll uh, roll around a little bit on social media. Yeah, incredible Huck. Uh, he has a hell of a story to tell, that's for sure. Um, in fact, hold on, let's get him on as well. Why? Might as well. Let's just jump right into that. So, so tell us here, uh, Will Huckleby, uh, how did you get this incredible Huck um, gimmick here? Tell us about that. Well, first of all, uh, I'm going to excuse the fact that you have a very thick uh, New England Boston accent, but there's no L in my last name. It's Huckabee. Uh -oh. uh <laughs> <laughs> wow. You hear that? He's insulting Boston already. already? Did, did, he, did you not just tell him what my name is? Yeah, the Boston Bad Boys. That's right. Here. Yeah. See, these Southern guys. Yeah, all right, Southerner. <laughs> What I'm do you just, got? Look, I'm, I'm just saying you can't say khakis are car keys at the same time, okay? Wow. Uh, Look at that. <laughs> Coming out swinging. Yeah, he's a heel. Coming out swinging. Yeah, I guess so. Look at that. So you stole the incredible, <laughs> you stole the incredible Hulk gimmick. <laughs> Uh, no, I did not. Uh, the greats <laughs> always borrow. Remember that. Okay. <laughs> kind of like Bill Belichick. Um, <laughs> he didn't borrow that Super Bowl ring. That's his, though. Oh, stop it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he got you now. 
Got you now, Huck. Anyway, uh, no, it, uh, actually, I was I was going through a, a really crazy time in wrestling, and uh, for anybody that's in the wrestling business, they know that it just gets to a point where your, your current gimmick is getting stale, and you're just really looking for something to to sink your teeth into. Um, and I was just riding down the road, traveling to a show with a buddy of mine, and uh, he was like, why don't you just become the Incredible Hulk? And I was like, what? And he was like, you know, you're big, you're strong. Uh, the angrier you get, the stronger you get. He was like, just, and he's like, and it, and it fits. He's like, you know, the Incredible, instead of the Incredible Hulk, you can be the Incredible Hulk. And I was like, hmm. So I tried it out at a show that weekend, and it really caught on and stuff, and I've been doing it ever since. That's that's something else. And how's that been going for you? Um, uh, it's been it's definitely been going very well. Uh, I'm very I'm starting to get recognized for it. Uh, people associate um, that gimmick with me now. They it's, it's very easy to explain your gimmick and who you are. We just tell me, look, I'm the Incredible Hulk. Oh, so you you're like strong and big, and you don't want to see you angry. And I'm like, exactly. Interesting, because you know it is it is kind of crazy when I think about um, you, where you are a big, strong dude. There's no two ways about it. I mean, I, I, how tall are you? and How much do you weigh? Uh, I'm five. I'm not really tall. I'm I'm five ten and a half, uh, and I'm trying to lose weight because uh, I'm run, I, I put it out there in the universe that I'm going to run a marathon uh, for my 40th birthday. Uh, but as of right now, I weigh about two sixty. Uh, about a month ago, I was pushing the scales at 285. Um, at my heaviest, I've weighed 315. I mean, wow. but you're a thick dude, man. Let's let's not let's not uh, play games here. It's not like you're out of shape, uh, despite the fact that you're 260, 510 there, right? Oh, definitely, yeah. I, I definitely work out. Uh, definitely run three and a half miles every night, uh, trying to get ready for his 5K. I'm doing it in a month and a half. Um, really big on lifting heavy weights and doing deadlifts and squats and bench pressing and stuff. Uh, as, of, as of late, I've started doing yoga, and that's really helped out with my flexibility and my recovery time. So, yeah, you know, just because you're big doesn't mean you just have to rely on that. Like, you, really, the, the bigger you are, uh, the more you have to take care of your body and your joints. You know, are you strong enough, you think, to lift Duke up and throw him over the top of your head off off of the building that we're in right now? Do you think it's about three stories? What's wrong with you? Do you think uh, you could just easily? How much do you weigh, Duke? I, no, I, how much do you weigh, Duke? I'm a strapping uh, 180 right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can, definitely, I can definitely pick you up and throw you with no problem. I like uh, that. I can, actually, I can actually curl about 200, 215. Wow. All right. Well, we're not. We're not. Gonna I like curl this idea. Either. You know, we'll we'll talk about it after the show. No, we're not we'll going to talk about it after the show because here's what I want to know, and, and this is why I asked about. I brought up the fact of, of your size because you are you're a big dude. You describe yourself as a nerd, but I've never seen a nerd as big and strong as you are. So you got to explain this to me here. I, what, what qualifies you to to call yourself a nerd? Uh, well, first of all, I, was ne- I wasn't I was always this big, first of all. When I graduated high school and joined the uh, U.S. Army, I was about 5'2", 125 pounds. Uh, the best way to describe how I looked is that I was the living embodiment of Steve Urkel from Family Matters. <laughs> it's funny because so that, is that was- Duke. Stop. <laughs> Did I do that? Stop. Like- Stop. Uh, that that was me all through high school. Uh, I'm a voracious reader. I love. Uh, I'm a huge fan of classic American literature. Uh, my favorite author of all time is William Faulkner. My favorite book of all time is The Sound and the Fury. Um, you know, I, I study wrestling. I call myself a wrestling nerd because I actually study wrestling, um, and not just you know WWE. But I watch. Uh, you know, Japanese wrestling. I'm a huge Lucha Libre fan. I watch, you know, Brit wrestling and wrestling in Australia and Africa. Uh, one of my guilty pleasures right now is watching Malaysian pro wrestling. So for any of your fans and listeners out there, I'm going to give them a plug right now. Check out Malaysian pro wrestling on YouTube. Uh, it's some of the greatest. It's, it's, it's so bad that it's great. Um, <laughs> well, I was going to say, what makes it, what makes it so different? Uh, the, the production skills are top notch. Like they, uh, I think outside of WWE, uh, they're pro- and maybe like WWE and and New Japan, um, Malaysian pro wrestling has probably some of the best production. Uh, not only for as far as like a live audience, but also coming across on video. 
but the wrestling is it leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> um, you can you can tell that there is a very heavy American wrestling influence, um, but there hasn't been like an actual American wrestler to go over there and train them for the most part. Interesting, interesting. So shout out to Malaysian Pro Wrestling. I mean, our friends over at Middle Kingdom Wrestling in China they they've uh, partnered with them on a few shows there. So I'm sure Adrian and the folks over at MKW uh, in China. They'll get a kick out of you uh, plugging Malaysian pro wrestling there. Oh, yeah. I, I have a couple of friends and stuff that wrestle for Middle Kingdom. Uh, Shiho, uh, Zombie Dragon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Big Uncle, Sam. Uncle Money. Like, yeah, those those are all really good, really close friends of mine and stuff. What a small world, huh? What a small world. Duke, you don't have any friends. No, I have plenty of friends. You have no Everyone's friends. my friend. Jesus. So so let's, let's jump into this here, though, uh, Will, because it— you're a very engaging person. I mean, that's clear, and, and you're a badass dude. You, you you made a pretty good name for yourself on the indie scene, beating people up. Uh, and that's why you're in the main event more often than not. I, I got a message from uh, Sade from DDT Divas, which, you know, shout out to Sade and, and DDTDivas.com. It's a great blog. It's a wrestling blog. I love Smooth Operator. It's one of my favorite easy listening songs. What? It's a Sade. No, not that Sade. Oh, okay. Fool. Jesus Christ. But anyway, uh, Sade reached out to me, and she asked me to to, to check out uh, some information. And, and, and in particular, you posted something on Instagram, uh, Will. You were wrestling for Southeastern uh, Pro Wrestling out of Carbon Hill, right? Yeah, uh, Southeastern Pro Wrestling in Carbon Hill, Alabama. So, so I, I don't want to set the stage myself. I, I want you to tell us in your own words— what happened at the event, and what prompted you to post the post that you did on your Instagram? Because it, it was pretty strong. Um, well, you know, the, the day started off like any other day. I got to the building, met the promoter, met the booker. Uh, everything was really good. Was going over the matches. Um, you know, I, was, I originally thought I was supposed to be wrestling one match that night, but it turns out I had to wrestle twice, which for the most part isn't a big deal for me uh, as long as I know ahead of time. Um, but when I originally got the booking, I thought I was just doing a 10-man tag match. But that's neither here nor there. Um, for the most part, the show was going really well. Uh, the promoter had made a a statement or, you know, had set down some ground rules before the show, which is, for the most part, is usually very smart. You know, you tell the fans, don't cross the guardrails, don't throw anything at the wrestlers, don't touch the wrestlers. Uh, and then he also told them, you know, no – Name calling, no derogatory hate speech, things of that nature. Um, I didn't know at the time, but 2020 hindsight, I, I later found out that um, they had an incident in previous shows where there were people who were saying some pretty racist, uh, racially tinged verbiage at another black wrestler, which prompted this wrestler to knock a hat off of a fan's head. But. Fast forward, we're in the main event. Uh, and this is where the actual story goes. Because everything before this is just regular indie wrestling stuff. You know, you put together matches, you come up with the spots, whatever. Um, so we're getting very close to the match. We're doing this waterfall sequence, a big, this very complicated dive sequence, uh, where I eventually end up diving onto the other nine guys in the crowd, uh, or in the match, I'm sorry. Um, so after I do the dive, I'm selling it, uh, and I'm off to the side, and this, I hear these fans like, hey, hey, you, black guy, like, turn around. We want to get a picture of you. And, of course, I'm a heel, so I'm not going to give them the satisfaction of getting a picture of me on the ground, especially not my face. If you take a picture of my back, I don't care. But I'm not going to turn around and pose for you as a heel. Mm. Uh, so they keep catcalling, and then they're like, hey, you in the red, I know you hear us. Turn around. We're trying to get a picture of you. And, of course, like I said, I'm just ignoring them uh, because I'm a heel – uh, and, and that's just what you're supposed to do to, you know, to draw your heat. Um, so as the mat, you know, the match is going on, guys are starting to get eliminated out of the match. Uh, my spot comes up. I have to get back into the ring. So I start getting up. Uh, and then this gentleman's like, yeah, that's right, boy. Get on your knees where you belong. And when he said that, I immediately gave him the finger. Now, I knew there were kids in the audience, but there really weren't any kids around them. They were kind of behind me and off to the other side. So I very discreetly gave him the finger where basically only they could see. And um, now knowing then, I, you know, the guy was like, well, that's okay. We got that picture. And I'm like, I don't care. You got a picture of me giving you the bird. I don't care. Um, for me, the reason why I gave them the bird, 
is because I've wrestled all throughout the South. I've wrestled in the North, uh, the Northeast, Midwest, Texas, Oregon, uh, Mexico. Racial people making racial comments and using the N word and calling me a sambo and a spick and a monkey and a lawn jockey. While that may piss me off. Uh, it doesn't bug me as much as being called a boy. Um, the reason being, if anybody knows about the Jim Crow era uh, when it comes to America, especially the South, um, racist bigots would call grown men boy as a way to demean and emasculate them. Uh, and as a child growing up, my grandfather and my stepfather always told me um, – you never let anybody disrespect you as a man. Uh, if somebody calls you a boy, that means that they don't respect you as a man and never let that happen. And when he said that, I was like, I'm not going to let this guy get away with calling me a boy. That's not happening. So, of course, I voiced my displeasure. Um, the match ends. Me and the promoter had this really good promo back and forth. Uh, where basically I do the old, you know, you, I don't expect you guys to know because you're Yankees, but here in the South. Oh, here we um, go. Here we go. I think there's some <laughs> static on the line. Uh, we might have another call coming through. Uh, but here in the South, if you're a heel, you cut a promo on, you know, on a Southern crowd, you know, you, 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 you start being very insulting. You call them rednecks. You tell them that they're toothless and they live in trailer parks. And they get, they, you know, they get food stamps and things like that. Uh, and I basically cut a promo saying I was going to take their their Alabama heavyweight championship and take it back to North Carolina where I'm from, where there's real wrestlers and real men and there's nothing. You know, you redneck, toothless, trailer park living, uh, food stamp receiving, inbred, uneducated GED having fans can do about it. All right. And of course the. And, of course, the fans, you know, they're from Alabama. They, Of course, nobody likes being called redneck or toothless or inbred. Uh, but they start booing, and, and that's fine. And we get to the back after the match, and the show is over, and we're talking and stuff. Uh, and the referee comes up, and he's like, hey, I'm really sorry about what happened out there. Like, I don't know what happened. And I'm thinking that he's apologizing because he had messed up a couple of times. He was very green. He had been in the business for about two and a half, three years. And he was still very green. So I thought he was apologizing for making some small mistakes in the match as a referee. And I'm like, hey, you know, it's fine. Uh, we made it through the match. Nobody got hurt. We got the point across. It's cool. Um, then the promoter, you know, we started hearing the promoter talking over the loudspeaker. And I'm like, you know, it wasn't the greatest sound system. Uh, so he kind of sounded like Charlie Brown's mother. Um, you know, the whole want, 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 want. And I'm just like, hey, man, I really wish this guy would shut up. He's kind of killing our heat. Um, just let the fans leave and be pissed off and come back next month. Uh, then the promoter gets done talking. He comes to the back, and he's like, hey, guys, don't worry about it. That gentleman's ne- him and his girlfriend are never coming back. Uh, I- I'm-, I'm always going to stick up for the boys no matter what. And at this time, I didn't know what was said. I'm just assuming, like, you know, he was just a little too belligerent, and they were like, we got to get rid of this guy. I just thought he was an unruly fan. And I'm just like, yo, you know, if he's unruly or whatever, it's fine. Like, don't, you, you want that kind of heat. You want that heat where people are going to pay their money to come back and see you get your come up in. Um, so we're still talking, and then another wrestler's uh, wife comes in, and she's like, oh, my God, did y'all hear what he said? And we're like, no. Oh, well, that that older white guy with the in the the wheelchair, the motorized scooter, him and his girlfriend got really pissed because uh, they were mad that you was a lot. That you know they were mad because the promoter said there would be no name calling and no hate speech and stuff like that at the beginning of the show, uh, and they're mad because you called them rednecks. And he was like, "Hey, why does he get to call us a redneck and that we can't call that nigger a nigger?" Um, and we we're like, "Wow, <laughs> and, that's yeah, unbelievable." Yeah, and, and, and we're just like, what? And I'm just like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, he should never come back. Like, the hell with that. Like, I was already, I was like, was it the guy in the corner? And she was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, the hell with this guy. Like, he already called me a boy earlier. Now he's dropping in bombs. Like, it's cool. Nah, the hell with this guy. Um, so we get paid. I leave the building. We get paid. There's no incidents. I go to Waffle House because, once again, in the South, we go to Waffle House. Mm, you, know, you can keep it. You, you, first of all, don't you ever talk bad about the <laughs> establishment that is Waffle House. I'm okay. I'm sorry. Well, I didn't say it, but I'm very. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh no! And all of a sudden, you're gonna pretend you go to Waffle House all the time. Well, I just don't want any. Problems you eat the with worst this guy. food in the, in the world. I don't want any problems with Will. All right. I'm just about to say, don't you ever besmirch the establishment that is Waffle House. That is a staple of every wrestler's diet, post show diet. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's probably the only place you can get that amount of calories that you, that your body's craving. 
Well, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> the only time you go to an IHOP is if there's not a Waffle House around, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so, you, so you go to the Waffle House. Yeah. <laughs> so we go to the Waffle House. Uh, we're all sitting there eating, and the, the 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 friend of mine who actually got me the booking, he gets a phone call. And he's like, "Oh, it's the promoter, and they're talking and stuff." And he hangs up, and he's like, "Hey, Will, let me ask you a question." And I'm like, "What's going on?" Uh, he was like, "Can you explain this picture?" And he shows me a picture that I posted on social media. And so I was like, "Oh yeah." Well, here's why I did it. I told him about the guy calling me a boy and telling me to get on my knees where I belong. And I told him, I was like, yeah, I knew there were fans. I knew there was kids around. So that's why, you know, I'm turned the way I am when I'm giving him the finger. So that way, really, none of the kids could see it. It's a very, you know, uh, very slick movement. Because it wasn't like I sat there and threw it out in his face. It was just like, you know how if you two are bickering face-to-face and one person gives the other person the finger while you're acting like you're rubbing your eye or something like that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, that's kind of how I, I did the gesture, where it was like I was wiping the sweat off my forehead while flipping him the bird. Right, right. Um, I'm doing that so to I Duke right him. now, by the way. You can't see it, but I'm doing Stop that to Duke it. Stop right now. Stop that right now. Jesus. Congratulations. Good job. <laughs> you might be my new favorite I'm one. a team player. Um, <laughs> so uh, I told him why I did it, and he was like, well, look, man, um, he, he said that these fans are pissed off because they've been banned um, for using the N word, and they don't think it's fair that you got to give them the bird and you get to come back. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, well, he said he can't use you anymore, that he can't book you anymore because the, 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 those two fans were complaining uh, about you giving them bird, you giving them the, the finger, and you're allowed to come back, but they can't come back for what they said, and they don't think it's fair. Now, was there was there something? Did they explain that these fans, other than complaining, uh, was there some threat by the fans of some kind of like litigious act? What was? Why did this guy sort of fold like a house of cards all of a sudden? I mean, I've dealt with working in the media, all kinds of people complaining about all kinds of insane things, and you know, yeah, yeah, you listen to them, but if you know, you know what I mean. Like ninety nine percent of the time, you don't even follow up on it. I, I think it was at the time. At the time, I think it was the promoter was trying to be fair because he was like, okay, I did say no profanity and no hate speech. And even though he didn't say it, he did do a very profane gesture. So fair is fair. That's what I thought at the time, which is why when I made the post, I said I wasn't mad at the promoter or the company or the other, or people of Alabama. I understand that not everybody in Alabama is racist. And I wasn't mad at the promoter. I was more mad about the fact that this fan got to dictate who worked there and who didn't. Right. Uh, that's how I felt at the time when I made the post. Now, as time has progressed, I've started to realize that that's not the case. You get what I'm saying? It was, and, and the reason why I made the post, and let me backtrack to the story. So when I told him and he told me that I, he wasn't going to book me anymore, I was like, well, that's messed up. And he was like, yeah, it is. And I'm like, well, what are the fans going to say next month? Because we've already kind of announced that I'm going to have a title match next month. Uh, what are we going to do? And he's like, well, I don't know how he's going to cover it. And I'm like, well, what about these people with the, you know, these people, these fans who have the picture? He was like, I don't know, like, they, they, you know, it's their picture. They could probably post it and stuff and say they got kicked out of this show because, you know, uh, they got kicked out of the show for no reason, but they went to a wrestling show and this guy gave them the finger and it was completely disrespectful. And so They'll call, they'll call reverse racism, my, yeah. my favorite yeah. phrase of, that means nothing. Yes, so um, I was like, well, I need to get ahead of this. Let me, no, I don't want to wake up in the morning and be already behind the eight ball. I'm going to go ahead and make a post about this as soon as I get home. Um, so I got home. I talked to my wife. I, I t- kind of told my wife what had happened that night. But when I finally got home, I told her the whole story. I told her my plan. And she was like, you should definitely post that. You don't want anybody else to tell your truth. Uh, so that's why I made the post. And I didn't expect for it to blow up the way it did. For me, it was I don't want anybody because in professional wrestling, your reputation is basically all that you have. Uh, And when people start burying you, when people start talking bad about you, that affects your book. That affects the way other people look at you when it comes to professional wrestling. And and I've tried very hard. Uh, When I first got into this business, I made a lot of stupid mistakes, being young, being from the projects. I made a lot of very foolish mistakes when I first got into this business. And I've tried very hard over the past seven to eight years to rebuild my reputation, to let these promoters know I'm not a heat seeker, that I'm not trouble, that I'm willing to do business. I've tried very hard to uh, assist and mentor other wrestlers when I could. And if I couldn't help them out, 
uh, I've tried very hard to point them in the direction of somebody that could help them out with their issues. So I'm not going to let some racist bigot ruin everything that I've built up in the last seven, eight years. So, so let me ask you this, Will, uh, because your post was powerful, and you're right, and you did it on Instagram, but on Twitter it got retweeted and shared, and like I said, it was even sent to me uh, by ddtdivas.com, great website. Uh, has anything changed since then? I mean, I, I know the promoter's getting a lot of heat, especially um, considering well, that he, he told you that he, he said he's not going to book you anymore, which is ridiculous, by the way. Uh, has anything changed? Well, now since this post has, I guess, gone wrestling viral, because it's not viral viral. It's not like a million people know who I am now. But since it's gone like wrestling viral, um, he's kind of changed his tune and said, oh, we didn't say that he could come, that he couldn't come back or that he wasn't never going to get booked. We said that he was suspended for 90 days. And then they changed it to he was suspended for 60 days. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, come on, this is bullshit. This is the independent wrestling scene. We don't have a contract with you. You can't suspend me. Mm. Like, all you can say is we're not going to book you for two to three months. Like, don't try to cover your own ass. Um, what's also been I've learned since then is that uh, the reason why the referee came in and was apologizing the way he was was because this racist bigot who had said these things was his father and his father's girlfriend. Um, the referees. Yes. It was the referee's father. Wow. Um, and he's and since this has happened, he has lost the booking there because they're like, well, we don't want to bring you back because of your father. Um, so he's lost the booking. Yeah, from what I've been told, he's a really good kid. From other promoters in Alabama, I've been told that he's a really good kid, and the only issue is who his father is. Like, that's the biggest issue with this kid. But he's a really good kid, really well-liked, really, really well-respected. Um I've, I've, I have my own podcast that you gentlemen know about. I've offered uh, to let the promoter come on because he had gotten so much so much flack and so much heat on social media and never really said his side of the story. I had originally offered him. I was like, look, I have a podcast. I am willing to let you come onto my show and give you 60 minutes to say – uh, to say whatever you want, you know, you can explain why you made the decision you made. Would you change it differently, et cetera, et cetera. At first, he turned it down because he said his son was sick. Uh, but since then, he has uh, accepted the offer to come onto the show and explain his side of the problem or his side of the subject. Um, there's been so many things that's happened. Uh, I've, I've read statuses on social media. Uh, where the the racist bigot in question is denying that he never said those words. Uh, he's threatening to sue people for slander and libel and defamation of character. Uh, his big defense right now is, oh, well, he called us a redneck, and that's just as racist as being called a nigger. And everybody's like, no, only, your, only his buddies are agreeing with him. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Um while redneck may, while some people might not like being called a redneck, that word has nowhere near the power as the N word does. Absolutely. Well, and it's all the it's the context too, right? I mean, the N word isn't just the horrible word; it's the context. It's, it's everything it brings with it. Mm. That that there is no word in the English language, or probably any other, uh, for white folk that holds so much negativity behind it. You know, even if you call someone a redneck or whatever you want yeah, to say. It's not even – there's no scale that – It's interesting that this combines sense. two things, and Duke and I have talked about this before, where understanding what is racism and, and bigotry and how that – they're two different things. And you're dealing with this – to me, it's like this guy in the wheelchair, uh, whoever he is, he, he th this is bigoted. This is calling you boy. This is using the N-word. But the fact that, um, that the promoter – is going, you know, to say, well, um, because I don't want any problems, I don't want any problems. Uh, I'm, I'm just not going to book you anymore. To me, that smells like uh, racism because that's systemic uh, to the problem. That's bigotry driving the train on this a little bit, rather than exactly. saying we're throwing this guy out. Hey, you're a dink for flipping him off, but okay, that's not using the N word. That's not feeding it, and it's like. To me, that's racism at work. Even if that's not what's intended, that's what's happening because it's the system. Yeah. Because who's paying the price, and who's the person who's out there whining and complaining? And See, my thing is, uh, like, I, like I said, I've been on several shows all throughout the South and, and other in other places where um, 
hate, like racial speech and racial slurs was used. And not, I, I will admit, not every time did I did I respond in such a nonviolent way. Um, <laughs> I, I don't blame you. But even when I did respond in a nonviolent way, in a violent way, or in a very uh, vocal way, um, I've never had a promoter tell me I can't, I can't use you now because you responded back to racism. Yeah, usually what a, what a response! Been, yeah. it, well, it doesn't. It, go ahead. It, 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 it's always been uh, we know what happened. Uh, that person is not coming back. In the, is either we gave him his money or we didn't give him his money. Um, hey, will do us a favor next time. Don't do that, okay? Well, like, if this ever happens again, don't respond the way you responded. Well, uh, what's more, you know, if we're talking about profanity and all this and the kids in the audience, what's worse, uh, them seeing the finger, which they'll see in any television show on cable six days a week, or uh, letting an uh, old racist man uh, dictate a wrestling promotion's uh, handling of all this? Like, what? what's the lesson here? What, wh- what lesson are we trying to teach? You know what I mean? Like, doesn't make any sense. Like the, the the punishment doesn't fit the crime. It, none of it makes any sense to me. Definitely not. Um, and like I said, I knew that there were children in the crowd, and um, there have been people on social media that was like, "Oh, well, his interest music probably has that word in it." And I'm like, "No, it doesn't." Uh, usually, with the exception of one company in Atlanta, um, I usually use King Nothing by Metallica. Um, <laughs> I, what, there's I, a nice bit of irony. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> and for the only other company where I don't use that, it's a very edited version of Pastor Troy's uh, Universal Soldier. Yeah. So there's there's never really any profanity or mm-hmm. any racial slurs in any of my entrance music. As far as the kids go, like I said, I knew that there were kids in the audience, which right. is why I, I kind of hid myself and hid me flipping them the bird. Well, th- um, and, and the argument that this guy is saying, well, he called us a redneck and flipped us the bird, and they, like, you, like, but but me using the N-word isn't harmful to the kids. Do you know what I mean? Like, the, the, the fact that we're going to try and compare apples to oranges here, and that's the argument, it's, a piece is, of it's, work. it's yeah. insane. And yeah. it, it, it fuels into uh, my theory, which is uh, the only thing racist people uh, hate more than black folk are being called racist. Like, that's the only thing that triggers them even worse than a black guy being successful or whatever, uh, is that if you call him a racist, well, oh, my God, how dare you? Like, that's... <laughs> exactly. And this gentleman has gotten on social media, and uh, I guess he's deleted the post, but uh, people have sent me the screenshots where he has no problem using this word on social media. Of course Ooh. not. Ooh. Of course not. You know why? Because when he goes out in public, uh, people bend over backwards to make sure he's okay sure. with using it. Sure. You know, like, there's in, in, in big ways probably and in small, and this is a... And again, whether or not the intention was overt on the part of the promoter, he's feeding into it. He's feeding into the system that that sucks. Definitely. Uh, and, and like I said, like I've said before, um, and the, the response and the outreach from fans and wrestlers worldwide has just been incredible. Uh, I don't consider myself a civil rights activist. I don't consider myself... Uh, I'm in no way on the same level as Colin Kaepernick, you know, trying to protest uh, police injustice or Eric Reed or Martin or Martin, uh, I mean, sorry, Malcolm X or Martin Luther King. Like, I'm nowhere on that level. Um, but this situation has made me realize that there is still racism when it involves professional wrestling. We still have racist promoters. We still have racist bookers. We still have racist wrestlers. Um, And none of this is ever going to change until we go ahead and accept the fact and we go and put it out there in the open for everybody to know that, yes, there is still racism when it comes to professional wrestling. That doesn't mean that there will always be racism, but we will acknowledge the fact that there are racists and bigots involved in this business and this sport uh, and until we call them out on social media, nothing will change. Um, I don't know how it is in Boston, but down here in the South, you have what they call these ego promoters where they don't care whether they have seven people or 7,000, they're going to run a show regardless. And to them, it's not about uh, making money. It's about saying, hey, look at me. I'm a wrestling promoter. Um, so when people say, oh, you can just vote with your pockets, And with your wallet, that's not always the case because some people don't care about making money. What they do care about is being called out on social media Mm -hmm. uh, because as soon as my posts started getting uh, over 200 shares and, you know, 400, 400, 500 comments and it was posted on Georgia Wrestling History and gotten 7,000 views 
uh, 7,000 original views in less than 12 hours, all of a sudden he started reaching out to me. Uh, this promoter was like, oh, man, uh, I'm really sorry. Uh, well, we, we won't say, well, we're, you're not banned. You can come back, but we'll bring you back in two to three months once all of this has died down. It no, sounds like what's good for him, really. Huh. Exactly. Like, that's not acceptable to me. You know, uh, I, I don't feel like I was in the wrong. Uh, I don't feel like what I did in reaction to what he said was wrong. It's deep. It's deep. Well, uh, no, okay. Sorry. Well, well, I was going to ask you if, if uh, fans or promoters who, who are not looking to uh, sweep things under the rug and, and, and what have you, if they want to get in touch with you, what's the best way they can do it? Actually, before we get to that, just before we, we, we wrap up, I just found it very interesting that you had to qualify that you're not Malcolm X or Martin Luther King Jr. in order to ta- feel comfortable talking about the civil rights issue and, and, and the issue of racism when you've experienced it directly. To me, that's how effed up our society is Today, still yeah. Yeah. and and how how little we've come from when those guys were trying to make a change like it's amazing to me I, i'm not black i will never have to experience that i'll never know what that's like and how awful that truly is but i think it's amazing that somewhere along the line black folk think they had to say listen i'm not malcolm x but i think there's a problem yeah it's <laughs> no there's a problem you know yeah. what i mean and and you're right the, the, the they have to be exposed it has to be called out and in the cases where it's financially viable, uh, it needs to be – it's done done there and called out. I think it's a, it's a two-handed thing. Good call. Well, th- thank you for those – thank you for that observation. Uh, the reason why I say that is because I don't want uh, – I don't want anybody, whether it's your fans and listeners or people that contact me through social media and stuff, I don't want them thinking that – uh, I, I made this post on some crusade to clean up professional wrestling. I didn't. Uh, for me, this was just me telling my friends and people who follow me on social media, like, listen, and the fans of SCPW, like, listen, um, if you don't see me again, this is the reason why I'm not coming back to Carbon Hill. Sure. Uh, th- this wasn't a, a call to arms to say, hey, everybody, there's racism in wrestling and we should stand up against it. It has kind of developed into that mm-hmm. uh, over the last couple of days. It's developed into this. Um, and, and it's really touching uh, that I've had people from literally all over the world, the UK and Australia and Ireland and Canada, Mexico, the Middle East, you know, all of these these fans and other wrestlers uh, from around the world contacting me, telling me that they support me, uh, telling me that what was done was wrong. Uh, So it's kind of morphed into uh, a second civil rights movement, except for this time it's in professional wrestling. And I think it's great because you know what, whether or not someone wants to admit it or whatever side of this they're on, you're in the crusade. You're in the crusade. They, if someone says to you, I, I, you're on the, no, guess what? You're already in it. You yeah. just don't know you're in it. Yeah. And it's happening. It's been happening. So pick it, pick the side and, and make sure you pick the right one. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, and that, that, that's just to uh, me. I, I've always felt like racism, and we all know racism isn't genetic. It's it's a learned trait. Absolutely. Um, and I'm, I really, I have to say, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a friend. Uh, I I feel like I have to set a good example. Um, we've th- my wife made a really good point that even though this was a very bad situation, a lot of good has coming out of it. Um, I was able to talk to my young children about racism and about racial slurs because they don't really have to deal with that where we live at um, because it's such a diverse place. Hmm. Um, and like I said, there are younger wrestlers with less experience who are contacting me about, hey, Will, would this happen to me? What Should I say something? Should I speak out? Yes, you should speak out. No, you don't have to take this booking. It's okay. Uh, if you're having to deal with a, a company um, allowing this kind of rhetoric in their fan, with their fans and stuff and at their shows, it's okay to say, you know what? I'm, I don't want to be here. This is not the place for me. Uh, and I'm going to let everybody know that if you're not racist and you don't like hate speech, you shouldn't be here. This is not the company you want to go to. Deep, deep. So, so how can folks reach out to you, Will? Because you, you, you've laid some real heavy stuff down here, and, and it, like you said, it wasn't your intention to be put in this position, but you're here now. And it's, it sounds like it's well. It wasn't his intention to be called the N word either. You know what I mean? Like, that, <laughs> but, but he's here now. Yeah. And he's doing something with it. Right. And he's doing something That's positive. Right. And he's affected people's lives in a right. positive, productive manner, which is just amazing that you're you're 
you're, you're taking this burden and you're doing something with it, which you're not obligated to do that. You don't have to. Uh, yeah, yes, I am. I, I, I am obligated uh, because I'm a, like I said, because I'm a father, because there are younger wrestlers of different races who look up to me and, and ask for me for advice and kind of look at me as a mentor. I have to speak up um, on their behalf because a lot of times with these younger wrestlers, they don't feel that they have the power mm. or the stroke or the, the experience or the, the vet status, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, to speak out against it. Um, a, a very smart promoter, somebody who's way smarter than I am, uh, called me on the phone to talk to me about this situation. And he was like, Will, you have to speak up. You have to call this guy out. You can't try to be uh, political and not ruffle any feathers. He's like, the worst thing you – and he looked at me. Well, we're on the phone, and he asked me a question. He's like, can you swim? And I was like, excuse me? He's like, can you swim? And I was like, yes, I can. He's like, then why are you worried about burning bridges? Ooh. You're going to get to the Ooh, other side of the go. river no matter what. I'm Let's putting that on. in the movie I'm writing. I'm That's putting it. that in I'm stealing that. that. You better attribute that. I'm taking that. Yeah, you better attribute that. <laughs> well, how can folks get, get in touch with you, Will? Uh, social media, Facebook, William Huckabee. Um, I've had too many concussions to come up with some fake name, ladies and gentlemen. So Will Huckabee is my Jeez. real name. As unbelievable as that is, that's just my real name. Uh, but William Huckabee on Facebook, uh, William Huckabee, all one word, on Instagram, uh, W.A. Huckabee on Twitter. Um, they can check out my podcast every week, The Wrestling Nerdcast, uh, on iTunes, on YouTube. Uh, we just started streaming it live on Twitch this past episode. Uh, and I think that this coming week, um, a lot of people should tune in because, like I said, the promoter in question will be a guest in the show, and you'll be able to hear live Tuesday night, 9 p.m. You'll get to hear the conversation between me and him and all of these answers, all, well, all the questions that everybody has uh, will be answered that night. Deep, deep. William Huckabee, we appreciate you, brother. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. And you know what? You two guys aren't that bad for a couple of Boston Boston. Oh, there he goes. Boston. There he goes. He's got he's to make his heel money. He's got to make his heel um, money. I see how it I'm is. A, Hey, in the South, you know what I'm saying? I'm a baby face, okay? Let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. Are you flipping me off? No, I'm well, maybe. <laughs> Good stuff. But it's only out of love. It's only out of love. <laughs> Jeez. I... <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's it's we book these these um interviews and we don't know where it's gonna go. No. We don't but, know where um, it's gonna go. I do appreciate a heel taking a true heel turn at the end. Yeah, he sure did, didn't he? Jeez, I, I don't want any problems with this guy because he's a big dude. I tell you that much. But what? Who? Who? No one deserves to be treated like that. Anyway, no. I mean, God, we we've talked and we could talk for hours and hours about racism and 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 in pro wrestling and outside of pro wrestling. And sure, this is just an interest. Yeah, it's it's a microcosm of the the bigger picture. Mm. And you know, again, the difference between bigotry and racism. Bigotry ignited this thing, and racism did the rest. Because it's like, what's easy for me? It's easy for me to be, it's easy for me to just say, you know what, uh, you know, hey, black guy, take a couple of weeks off because uh, this guy, I don't want that. Yeah, we want things to blow over. Right. Whatever that means. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a just, it's a total lack of perspective. Oh, because then it becomes your fault. <laughs> right, right, right? Right. Right. I can't have you here because we've got to let this blow over. But what does that mean? Mm-hmm. What did I do wrong? Black. You were black. Oh, That's what you did so wrong. Yeah, no, right? I mean. <laughs> look, I mean, in fairness, um. You know, Southeastern Pro Wrestling out of Carbon Hill, they did put out a statement. Mm -hmm. They did put out a statement. And, and in fact, I, while we were doing the interview, I, I even got a couple of comments, which, are, you know, in line with the statement, but a couple of comments from the promoter. Oh, himself. Question himself. You know, he, he did have some things to say. The guy's name is Shane. Uh, but let's just go straight to the statement because everything that he said was pretty much in line with that. We have a zero tolerance policy for this. We are a family friendly organization. There was an incident that happened Saturday night where a couple of fans told the wrestler, which was Mr. Huckabee, after a move from the ring to the floor, they said, yes, boy, stay on your knees where you belong. We suspended Mr. Huckabee for flipping the bird because we didn't at the time know what the fans said until we talked to a few fans close by, which confirmed that was said to him. The fans were immediately removed slash banned from the show. I'm trying to follow along mm -hmm. here. Uh, banned from the show because I walked over and they were hollering at me and said, 
he can call us names, but I wouldn't stand up for the fans when he called them hillbillies, toothless rednecks, and Alabama trash. So I said, what's the, what the difference than you calling them names? I don't know what that means. Okay. We stand behind both wrestlers and fans and have a zero tolerance for <laughs> racial or inappropriate behavior and this will is, immediately removed. This is this is there are there there's fine people on both sides is exactly what to me is what that statement says. I feel like this is somebody this promoter put his foot in it badly and is is handling the recovery uh just as badly. Uh, again, maybe this I I think that my guess is that this promoter himself uh, probably isn't a uh, a proud race, you know what I mean? Like someone who uses, you know. Sure. But in this business, we're in the system. Yeah. Like I said, we're all in the crusade, whether you like it or not. Yeah. yeah. So you've got to do the right thing. Don't don't mitigate. Oh, this you know, it's bad on both sides. You know, <laughs> you yeah. can't be everything. To you everything. can't equate right, and you can't equate flipping the bird, mm. which is a heel move at a wrestling event. By the way, since when is wrestling family friendly? That's baloney to me. Well, you know what I mean. There, it can I be mean, there's. That way. Well, listen. You know, flipping the bird. I mean, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's the way I grew up. Uh, that's pretty tongue in cheek. You know what I mean? That's not. Well, what kid doesn't flip the bird? But that's a whole. Well, other, this again. This yeah. is where and 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 this is where we were in. We're in the we're in the Bible Belt here. Yep. And yep. now we're gonna we're gonna be the ones who decide hmm. uh, what's good and what's bad. And I think again, it's a lack of perspective more than anything. Uh, I don't want to accuse anyone of being a racist, uh, but I'm looking at the facts and the statements. And to me, it seems it's being badly handled and it's just playing into a long history of, hey, uh, I'm sorry, but yeah, you have to you have to go. Here's a problem. Because I don't want any problems. Here's a problem. I want to believe the promoter. Yeah. I want to believe the promoter. Of course. Because I don't want to feel like something so blatantly ridiculous could happen right. and be mismanaged so terribly. Right. Right? Right. So I'm looking at this situation. The first thing I said to myself was not only do I want to get the wrestler on, mm -hmm. but I want to talk to the promoter and just verify some of this stuff. Right. Because we're not going to be, you know, we, we talk about a lot of stuff here on Duke Loves Wrestling. And you fans, you, you've heard us for a while now. We give our opinions on things. We analyze things. We give the facts as well. But one thing that we do is we present more than one side of mm -hmm. any issue that we talk mm -hmm. about. So I'm thinking, all right, maybe the promoter, maybe it's not as bad as is what's being presented. Because right. anybody in the in the moment can say, this happened, this is wrong, whatever. Let's go back, let's look at all the facts, and let's really right. dissect this thing. The promoter, and, and we heard Will say it, the promoter reached back out to him and said, no, no, you're not suspended anymore and all this other stuff. It happens way after the fact. Suspended. Here again, though, he made a good point. He's under the contract. Suspend me for what? Well, and, and Will said, I think Will said initially, this was the first time he wrestled for them. Right. So how, how, how can well, you suspend me if I've never even wrestled it's a for you power before play. until today? Again, it's a power play, and this kind of power play plays into racism. Yeah, it's bad. I, I, there's, like, no, there's a lot of levels to this onion, and they all stink. I can't put a positive spin on what was done here. Yeah. Because it just it was mismanaged, and and like Will said, it, it does look like the promoter had to backtrack, and then he unsuspended him once he started getting heat. Right, that's bad. You know, it's funny to to me. Um, let's not overblow it that this is like some you know uh, suddenly there was a clan uh, rally sure. happening. Sure, sure, right. Sure, sure. But I think this is even more important than something insane like that happening because this is the real life. This is the well. This is, this the, is the day to day racism. But right this is here. the day to day. Sure. Sure. It's right. It's it's a death by a thousand cuts. Mm. It's not, you know, what's on TV. It's not some guys with tiki toy. You know, this is the shit people go through every goddamn day. Yep. If I'm just going to come out and say it. Yep. And this is where the change has to happen. Mm. These awkward moments that are awkward and badly managed that now look racist. Well, why are we so close to the knife edge? Right. I mean, this is a societal problem. This is a, a problem with. You know, it, it goes right down. Sure, sure. Um, and and not any one person or three people are gonna, but you we you have to tear it apart. Yeah, and you know what? I'm glad. Put the micro microscope on it. Right. Magnify it. Let's let's do. And this. he made another point too, which I thought was great in the interview, which was he says you said you know you don't have to feel feel responsible. Yes. And he says I do. Mm -hmm. If more people, black, white, purple, said I feel responsible to the people that come after me. 
this would be gone in a generation. It's true. It's true. Because I think a, I think people who are just like, you know, well, it's just how I've always been. Mm-hmm. There's nothing we can do about it. Nothing never we can change. do about it. It'll never change. They never say, well, you know, this is how I am. Mm. But I owe it to my kid who comes along to maybe have to operate in a world Lord, where they're interacting with other people. Let's leave it better than yeah, what it was that's for right. us. Not just know? the same. Sure. Or worse. Sure. And you wrestling promoters, you better get it together out there. Including I'm, WWE. I'm talking to all of you. Uh, and Vince McMahon. You need – stop that. You need to provide a safe space for everybody. You need to be consistent with how you're going to handle situations. And you, you need to handle situations with some sense. Should we talk about Hulk Hogan and what he did when he went back to the WWE that time? We already, and didn't actually apologize we, for being a racist? beat that to hell. Yeah, well, I mean, we know what Hogan is. There, there, well, my point is uh, there is wrestling and races, uh, racism in wrestling, and it does go all the way to the top. Fair enough. You know, this weekend we have a uh, pay-per-view. So next week we'll be reviewing that, folks. We'll, we'll get somebody from one of the websites to come on and, and, and talk about what happened. Are you going to be posting pictures of your food? Yeah. Disgusting food? I love it. What are you going to get? You know, I'm thinking about Urban Pie Pizza. You ever heard of them? I have heard of them. Yeah, they they look they're pretty serious, man. They're in the they're in the grocery stores too. You can go to in in, in the frozen section, pick up an urban yeah, pie pizza. Of, maybe I'm not going to watch wrestle wrestle pay per view, mm. uh, but I might get myself some uh, Popeyes fried chicken. I haven't had it in a long time, and I think I owe myself. I think you owe yourself to get some Popeyes. I owe myself. Yes. I need to treat myself. Yes, and uh, do a Popeyes, and I'll do urban pie. There you go. Uh, but I won't be watching wrestling. I'll be living my life like a normal person. You're such a fool. Take it away, Tony Schiavone. Mr. Tony.